It's a lot of big news going on with our Baltimore Ravens. Y'all make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and leave a like on the video. Boy, y'all went crazy yesterday. I appreciate y'all a lot. But without further ado, let's get straight into it. So yesterday, Deontay Johnson was a trade acquisition for the Baltimore Ravens at wide receiver. And we, of course, are looking forward to his contributions as not only a wide receiver for the Ravens, but also as a return man for the Baltimore Ravens because our return game been pretty dry all season. But, hey, it's been safe, though. So, I'll take it, but we're looking for some explosiveness in the return game, and it's funny because we actually talked about that a couple of weeks ago, but anyway, um, the big question after the Baltimore Ravens traded for wide receiver Deontay Johnson, and, and even a, a bit of an argument amongst Ravens fans, I mean, when are Ravens fans not arguing, but it was, is Deontay Johnson coming here to be wide receiver three, or is he going to get bumped up to wide receiver two? There were some people saying like, look, Rashad Bateman, he was wide receiver too, uh, and he was alongside a company in Zay Flowers, but he should have that role no longer, especially after the drops like he had, not one, but two uh, in that last game against the Cleveland Browns. But then there's other people like, hold up, just because Rashad Bateman made two bad plays in that Browns game, it, it, you can't erase everything that he's been doing and how he's been coming along, especially his report that's been building with a Lamar Jackson. And both sides, I get both sides, but I got to lean a little more towards the latter because two bad plays does not make somebody a bad player. Now, with Deontay Johnson, he has a lot more experience, uh, especially as a wide receiver, uh, than Rashad Bateman does. And Deontay Johnson, he has not only been a wide receiver too, but he's been a wide receiver one. If you look at his targets, especially when he was with Steve, like he got a lot of targets. Wide receiver two don't get targets like that. So he's been wide receiver one. So I can understand why a lot of Ravens fans thought, oh, maybe he's coming in here to take over Rashad Bateman's place. And hey, I, honestly, you never know what could happen in the future. But Jacina Anderson, she broke down exactly what the situation is in Baltimore as of right now. Now, I will say, Things could possibly change in the future, but what it is right now, let's listen to what she had to say. She said, long tweet for those wondering about potential impact to the Ravens wide receiver depth chart. And yes, we were all wondering that. She said, I'm told Deontay Johnson's trade acquisition does not reflect a change in view of Zay Flowers and Rashad Bateman as the team's current wide receiver one and wide receiver two per source. So. She's saying them bringing in Deontay Johnson does not change anything with Zay Flowers, but especially Rashad Bateman, because that's what the question was about. Nobody was questioning if Zay Flowers was going to continue to remain Ravens wide receiver one. Everybody knows that. But the big question was Rashad Bateman. And of course, you know, people have recency bias. So it's all about what have you done for me lately? They looked at that big drop that Rashad Bateman had and they've been like, Ugh. but at the same time, there have been a lot of people who have still been iffy on Rashad Bateman. They like, hey, yeah, he's been doing better this year, but maybe it's still not good enough. And then those drops the other day, that brought them back to being like, oh, Rashad Bateman's this and Rashad Bateman's that. But anyway, Jacina Anderson is saying like, look, Zay Flowers and Rashad Bateman, their places are their places as wide receiver one and two, but she wasn't done yet. She also said, uh, wow, I'm told Johnson was brought to Baltimore for his speed, separation, and punt returning abilities. Uh, that's special teams, uh, especially with Deontay Hardy's knee uh, listing on injury reserve. It's been reinforced to both Rashad Bateman and Zay Flowers, even going back to last year when the team added additional weapons at wideout that the organization not only believes in the aforementioned duo, but also has very high confidence in in them so i was told they are not messing with that that's big now again we actions will speak louder than words because we see what she's saying and this must have come from the organization come from the ravens themselves but actions will speak a whole lot louder than words can let's see snap counts let, 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 let's see stuff like that and then we'll be like oh okay maybe it is real. but anyway continuing it says even with Johnson's obvious route running skills, I'm told the organization is keenly aware that both Flowers and Bateman are currently top 20 producing wide receivers in the league. Uh, right now, Flowers ranks 11th with uh, 527 receiving yards, and Bateman is 20th with 422 receiving yards on the season so far. Furthermore, Bateman just received a two-year contract extension worth $12.87 million uh, back in April. Now, that part, that part says a lot to me, but a little at the same time. It says a lot because that's great that Zay Flowers, he at 11, and Rashad Bateman at 20. You like, okay, like two Ravens receivers in a top, tw top 20 in receiver. Like, we would take, in plenty of years, we would take one wide Ravens wide receiver being in the top 20. And when it came to receiving yards. But to have not one, but two, oh my goodness, how far 
we have come for real like that that's crazy i love it i love it though um but the part where and that part says a lot to me but the part that says a little which is that bateman just received a two-year contract extension worth 12.87 million dollars back in april that's not that much money just you know that, that that's not like it's some big 15 mil 20 mil per 25 mil per year. no 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 that's like five and a half six six mil per year that's nothing especially with what wide receivers are getting paid these days so the contract extension part that don't really move me much but anyway continuing she said th this part I, I love this part so much she said however i'm told there's potential that nelson aguilar's reps might feel the impact more than anyone else that's not the part I'm talking about that I love. Uh, she said, but a vibe change is not expected to result from any displacement. As I'm hearing, the current plan is for Nelly to host Johnson at his house while Johnson gets acclimated to his most recent team swap. You, man, seriously, seriously. You got to be so humble. You got to be extremely accommodating. You got to be like, right now, my opinion, Nelly... He's the best teammate in the world right now. Best teammate in the world by far. I don't care who you compare to. Right now, Nelly is the best teammate in the world. Reason I say that is because you are already wide receiver three. And we've been talking about all season long how Nelly has been very efficient. Reason being because he doesn't get many opportunities. And, but when he does get an opportunity, he usually makes the most of it. But with Nelly, when they traded for Deontay Johnson... You could, you, everybody was thinking like, all right, you got the Ravens got their three top three wide receivers. Nelly getting pushed down the depth chart. So Deontay Johnson essentially takes over for Nelly and, and pushes him further down because it was either going to be Zay Flowers and Deontay Johnson as wide receiver one and two, or Zay Flowers and Rashad Bateman as the, the wide receiver one and two, and Deontay Johnson as wide receiver three. But either way, either scenario had Nelly going down on the depth chart. But for you, not only to I mean, you got no choice but to be okay with it because it's the business. But for you to willingly take him into your home and he's taking your job or messing up your job, who's doing that? I know I ain't doing that. You think I'm welcome somebody to somebody that take him? Please. But um, th that takes a lot. So shout out to Nelly, man, because I, I couldn't do it. I don't know if any y'all, but that's, that, that's great. Seriously, though, man. Um, and it also said currently Aguilar has 11 receptions for 170 yards on 22 targets on a season. Now, she said, as for whether there's any concern of Johnson's history with the Pittsburgh Steelers and some reported instances of upheaval carrying over, including a heated locker room argument with free safety Minka Fitzpatrick after the safety took issue with Johnson's treatment of the coaches on the sideline and seemingly walking away from the opportunity to recover running back Jalen Warren's fumble in a game against the Bengals last season per USA Today steal a wire. I'm told. Deontay Johnson will have an opportunity to mold his own future in Baltimore. The feeling is that people can grow up and mature and have their eyes open when in a new environment and hope and optimism. Still, I'm told it'll be up to him to make the most of this chance. We're going to talk about that in a tiny bit. But first, she also said, at the end of the day, the Carolina Panthers are paying most of Johnson's remaining salary in the deal as the Ravens reportedly will only have to pay Johnson about 625000 that's a lot of money, like, compared to those regular folks. But for Raven, that's literally nothing. Nothing. There is, like, hardly, there's really not much downside to this move at all. They gave up pretty much nothing to acquire him. They're paying him pretty much nothing to be on this team for the rest of the year. This is such, this, this move is pretty much all upside, in my opinion. It's all upside. Now, uh, she also said, Johnson will practice this week. And, yeah, he was at practice today. So, yeah, that's true uh, with the team today and this week. And he is expected to be in shape. The Ravens will still monitor how quickly Johnson acclimates into this new offense to determine the rate of his utilization in all usual due diligence. So, yeah, he is practicing today. Practicing today. He is wearing the number 18. And I know some Ravens fans, they look at that number 18 and say, ooh, I don't know about that. But he'll be OK. Don't worry about the previous people that wore number 18. Um, well, she talked about uh, him getting into it with, with Minka Fitzpatrick. Um, my guy, Cold Crush, he brought up some points uh, about uh, Deontay Johnson and his issues with the Pittsburgh Steelers and some possibilities with that. And he said the following. He said that he will definitely say that this move actually is a big needle mover. To me, I said it wasn't. 
but he's saying that it is but this is the reason why he said because he's a clear wide receiver one i think people forgot what he did in the black and gold when he was in pittsburgh uh he said he had effort issues once the steelers offensive line and their quarterback and other wide receivers and running backs just didn't show up so pretty much saying like he he was like man these dudes they ain't coming to play <sighs> I'm, I'm done so it, it seems like he sort of checked out but he also said Steelers shipped him off to dead man's land in Carolina. And Carolina had a bad offensive line, a bad wide receiver room, and a <laughs> bad quarterback, too. Uh, he said, and he did show out every game with Andy Dalton. And we're talking about the Panthers. He said he's more proven than any of the wide receivers that we got. He's seen double teams and still uh, lit teams up um, <laughs> like a match on a 4th of July cookout. Uh, he said that he's healthy and young, and now he got uh, guys on his back, and he gets to see the Steelers two times a year after being sent off. He said he's finally on a winning team. He was not on a winning team when he was with the Pittsburgh Steelers. But it's like he's not only on a winning team, but he's on a, like a, a pretty good team, especially the offense too. I mean, <laughs> really only the offense. But anyway, uh, he said this is the best quarterback that he's ever had. He's got King Henry, Zay Flowers, Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely. He got Rashad Bateman. He said if they double him, he can curtain call, but they won't double him, so – Curtain call. He said he's a home run hitter, uh, and he's also a deep play threat. So he he can do all the all the routes and everything like that too. So those are some good points uh, when it came to Deontay Johnson. So it's it's exciting. It's exciting. I know some people have asked me, "Oh, do you think Deontay Johnson's gonna play this week?" I certainly do. I think they're gonna get him out on the field right away. How many snaps is it gonna be? I don't think it's gonna be anything crazy, but I do think they're gonna want to get him on the field. Like A said, he's practicing already. And yeah, he, he's, he's going to be playing this week. And again, it, it may not be as much as a wide receiver. He's going to get his reps as a wide receiver for sure. But definitely as a return man to get us started. We talked about how Deontay Johnson is practicing with the Baltimore Ravens today. There were some other people that were practicing too. One of them being Marlon Humphrey. He was back at practice and boy. We miss Marlon Humphrey big time, especially when we saw all those drop picks. We, see, we used to seeing Marlon Humphrey drop pick. Well, we used to be used to seeing Marlon Humphrey drop picks, but that is Marlon Humphrey no longer because he catches everything thrown his way. Uh, so with Marlon Humphrey being back, we need you. We, we definitely need you. Um, also, somebody else who was in uniform but mostly working off to the sideline with a trainer uh, was Nate Wiggins. So he wasn't back all the way at practice, but he's working his way back so guess we'll continue to wait for updates tomorrow uh, and on friday as well now somebody who ravens mvp i mean pretty much ravens mvp no not even pretty much but ravens mvp every year lamar jackson they said that he was not out at practice uh, in the portion that was open to the media today so i'm not tripping right now i i don't think it's any cause for concern right now maybe it was just a rest day or something like that uh and i think we'll see lamar jackson back out there tomorrow now if tomorrow if he ain't out there then i'm gonna be like mm, i'll be looking up. now uh where that's big at is where, because deontay johnson this is his first day lamar if lamar jackson hopefully maybe he practiced in a portion that wasn't open to the media but with lamar jackson not being out there that just limits deontay johnson and him not even limits but it eliminates their chemistry uh, that the chemistry that they could have started working on today. Now they can if Lamar Jackson didn't practice at all. Like I said, hopefully he was out there maybe in a portion that the media didn't see. But if Lamar is not out there, then him and Deontay Johnson, they can't get it going. But again, like I said, there's tomorrow. So we ain't tripping too much yet. But there's tomorrow. Then there's Friday and whatnot. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. But also uh, on the roster, uh, Michael Pierce who left the game against the Browns with an injury. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens, they placed him on injured reserve. So he will be out at least, at a minimum, the next four games. Uh, they did sign a defensive lineman to the practice squad, but with Michael Pierce being out, that is a pretty big blow. Now, it, it, what makes it an even bigger blow is the health of Travis Jones. Now, if Travis Jones is healthy, if that ankle is right again, which hopefully it is, please let it be because he makes such a big difference on this defense, then Michael Pierce being out is still a blow, but it's much less of a blow if Travis Jones is healthy. But if Travis Jones is still dealing with that ankle, yeah, this sucks. I mean, it sucks either way. Um, I didn't see anything about Brent Urban yet, so I'm not sure the status of him, um, but that is Ravens roster update.
So now we got into my favorite part of these questions where we get to feature your questions. If you would like to be part of it for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, if you'd like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids and you can send your question directly on Patreon. For everybody else, you can send it to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Let's get into this first question from my guy Tyreek. He said, go get him. Go get who? What's up, Engraven? Thank you for responding to my last question. It honestly put a smile on my face. Hey, y'all put a smile on my face every single day. So I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Uh, he said, uh, with the recent news of us trading to get Deontay Johnson for a bag of potato chips, I honestly wasn't mad at all. It was a very underrated trade from EDC, and it cost us nothing. Now, with that being said, um, it's good timing, too. I did read something that said two other teams were in the mix, and Baltimore Ravens were actually the third team that ended up being in the mix, but they offered the best offer. So I'm sure the Panthers probably told Baltimore Ravens what the other two teams were offering, and they were like, ah, instead of giving you a six, we'll give you a fifth. And, bo and for the Panthers to give them a six and Deontay, like, still. It's such a steal. And then you think about the Texans with uh, Texans wide receiver Stephon Diggs. He's out for the year. Texans need a receiver. They knew Deontay Johnson was on the block. Maybe they were one of the other teams that was trying to get him. So Ravens, ooh, good timing, man. He says, I do wonder. Hey, he sent this before now. He said, I do wonder, does that make Bateman wide receiver three now? Boom. Hey, perfect video because it got, it got answered already. Uh, he said, uh, but with Michael Pierce potentially going on IR, oh, man, you've been calling everything that's been happening the day before it happened. You're good. Uh, he said, I, I do think the Ravens make a move for a pass rusher. How about trading David Ajabo since he was a healthy scratch anyway and a second-round pick for Max Crosby? Uh, pfft, that would be a no-brainer, but I don't think Raiders would even go for that. Uh, he said, or even this is not likely to happen, but trade Marcus Williams for a Buda Baker or a Tyron Matthew. I don't think a, a team would look to try to downgrade their safety to for the Ravens to upgrade their safety. Should have been 6-2. and two. Next question came from my guy, Terry. He said, what's up, and great. Hope all is well with you and the fam. And I pray that God continue to cover you guys every single day. Hey, I appreciate you, Terry. And shout out to your dad, too. He said, I got a quick question. If that's okay with you, I wanted to share my opinion on Sunday's game and wanted to have your intake on it. Uh, number one, Todd Monkey, Todd Munkin is arguably a top three offensive coordinator. I don't understand why the flock wants him gone after that bad fourth and one play with Derrick Henry and Wildcat formation. We literally almost came back in the game because of the offense. Well, yeah, uh, the offense the only thing that's been keeping the Ravens alive this year is it's been the offense. Um, I haven't seen any Ravens fans want him gone, but just that play, just to Ravens just try to get cute. That's, that's what we have been frustrated with. Oh, and it doesn't happen too often. But in that Browns game, they try to get cute a lot in that game, and you ain't got to do all that, man. Just be straightforward with it. Be straight up. And I think the reason that Ravens fans got so frustrated at Todd Munkin getting cute, especially in that situation, was because when you look at last year, Ravens, they were not with all the cute stuff, especially on the goal line in the red zone. They just got it in there. So that's what the Ravens have been doing for the most part this year. But when they got cute, that ended up costing them not only the points, but the game. Uh, he said, uh, twice this season we drove down the field in the end zone with one timeout of less and almost got a touchdown. In my opinion, Munkin should be considered the next head coach of John doesn't meet up with our standards this season <laughs> number two this loss is not on kyle hamilton and zach or it's on john harbaugh again kyle was literally asked to do everything this game blitz play man zone and nickel humphrey wiggins travis jones and michael pierce were hurt with marcus williams being benched once again in game adjustments uh marcus williams uh most definitely called Hobbs out uh, and john has had to learn how to deal with his players and not let pride get in the way players have an opinion too oh yeah you know like john harbaugh don't appreciate nobody named marcus talking back to him anyway he said but what is your opinion on this give zach or one more shot how many more shots to like uh, with, with zach or we, we, we've been saying it for a long time he ain't going nowhere homegrown ravens guy he ain't going nowhere so they ain't got to worry about that he said todd Munkin should be the next head coach if we don't if john, john harbaugh doesn't meet our standards John Harbaugh don't care about nobody's standards, like straight up. He don't, he don't care about Ravens fan standards. With John Harbaugh, he's going to be walking out on his own terms, whether that meets Ravens fan standards or not. Like, we could have every single conversation in the world about John Harbaugh, but he ain't going nowhere unless it's on his own terms. He said, I appreciate you for reading this and sharing this. Uh, when you get to this email, and just like the Ravens offense don't have uh, when it comes to the defense, big trust. Speaking of John Harbaugh, next question came from my guy, Tim. He said, Angry Raven haven't sent in a question since the 2020 draft. Wow. That's, that's a long time, my friend. He says, it's been a while. I've been watching every vid, though. Appreciate all that you bring to us. I got some questions for you. No, I appreciate you still watching, even though you ain't been sending nothing. Thank you for still watching. He said, what's going on with Harbaugh? Why does it seem like he's been coaching this long and can still get out coached, having no retaliation? Almost every week for the Steelers, Talon is exposing some loophole, just being smarter than everyone else. And Andy Reid and Spags are putting on clinics. What happened to the Harbaugh that always had a trick up his sleeve, holding in the end zone at the end of the Super Bowl and that one game against the Bengals? He just seems more lost and knowledgeable nowadays, and I wanted your opinion, or am I tripping? Again, thanks for these videos, man. I listen every morning on the way to work and from work and on the way home. Hope all is well with the fam. Appreciate you, Tim. So why is, does John Harbaugh seem to be 
getting out coached. Um, think about it though. Who's he getting out coached by? Uh, obviously he's been getting out coached by uh, Andy Reid with the Chiefs. So we've been seeing that. Uh, he's also been getting out coached by Mike Tomlin because Steelers they've been getting us a lot. Um, and then there's been some other some other teams, but for the most part, it's, it's been those guys. It's been those guys who have been out coaching because you think about the Baltimore Ravens and the records that they've been having. Yeah, they have a little blunder game here and there. But the guys where he's consistently struggling with are those guys. But who are those two guys? Mike Tomlin and Andy Reid. Those are the coaches in the league that know John Harbaugh better than anybody else. Anybody else. Because think about it. Mike Tomlin, I think he's been coaching, what, since 2000? I think I, I want to say 2006. Like, because he came, he started a couple years before Harbaugh, I believe. Um, but anyway, he goes, he been going against Harbaugh at least twice a year since 2008. So that's a long time. You're going to know somebody a lot if you go against them at least twice a year since 2008 and it's 2024. Another person, Andy Reid, John Harbaugh came from the Andy Reid coaching tree. So those guys, they got everything on John Harbaugh. They know everything about John Harbaugh. But a lot of these other coaches, John Harbaugh be getting them for the most part. You see the Ravens record when they go up against all these other teams, for the most part, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. When they're healthy, it's pretty good. So I just think it's those guys, and those are some of John Harbaugh's biggest hurdles. So when, not if, but when the Baltimore Ravens and John Harbaugh finally figure out how to get through those guys, especially Andy Reid, then we'll be world champions, baby. QB development issue. Next question came from my guy Ricky Williams. He said, hey, ain't great. Hope all is well, my friend. Came across this on my Facebook feed and got curious. What's your thoughts on this? Most of these guys were first-round picks over the last couple of seasons, so are organizations becoming impatient? Is it development, or is it just these guys weren't NFL ready coming out of college? Just very concerning to me because I assume most of these guys got a bad break being drafted to the wrong situation, but that's just me. That's it right there. Because, and what he said was, a he sent a list. Anthony Richardson, 22 years old, benched. Bryce Young, 23 years old, benched. Trey Lance was 24. Justin Fields was 25. Will Levis is 25. Zach Wilson is 25, Mike Jones is 26, Kenny Pickett is 26. The NFL has a QB development problem. Does the NFL have a QB development problem? It depends on how you look at it, but to me, I think it's, it's situation is everything. It's everything. And with these QBs, they be showing out in college, going off in college, going crazy in college. So they have all the success in college, so that pushes their draft stock higher. But if your draft stock gets pushed higher, that means you're going to go to a team that's on the lower end. And usually if a team is do doing a whole lot of losing, then that means they're looking for a quarterback. They don't have a quarterback. And when they draft the quarterback, quarterback's not always such an easy fix. It's not always the end-all, be-all. Not every quarterback, and hey, straight up, not every quarterback can be like a Lamar Jackson and give you an instant turnaround like that. Not all quarterbacks can come in and do that. It's tough. But situation means so, so, so much. So much to these different quarterbacks. So with a lot of these guys, situations, impatient. But again, I think situation is the number one impact on a quarterback's future. Never pick us unanimously. Next question came from my guy Aaron. He said, hey, man, Kyle cost us the game. No, he didn't. Kyle Hamilton, it, like his, his play, that, that dropped interception was a big contributing factor, but that was not the end all be all. But anyway, he said, uh, this is why everyone should never pick us unanimously. Wreck, wreck, wreck two against the Raiders. Oh, he meant, he meant week two. Week two against the Raiders. Everyone picked us and we lost. This week, everyone picked us and we lose. I'm telling you, that team can only win when they are three-point favorites or less, uh, or they are the underdogs. Uh, I'm not mad, but I'm not happy. Man, I just give credit with, to the Browns at the end of the day. This is why uh, we never win games where everyone picks us unanimously. What a frustrating loss for this team. Your boy. Um, it, it, ain't, it ain't got nothing to do with that. But right, Ravens, just they, they, they fall for the traps a lot. So they got to start avoiding these traps like a small mouse. Taking my head. Next question came from my guy Anthony. He said, What's up, Engraving? Hope all is good. So we lost to the Browns, LOL. I said it before and I will say it again. We have 11 draft picks. Send them off. Hit me out. The two bad teams we lost to had elite pass rushers. We need a pass rush trade for DBs. Uh, we, yes, we drop picks and everything, but we need a consistent pass rusher. If the Ravens do not make a trade at the deadline, how would you feel? And look at that. I ain't even got to answer how I would feel because I'm not going to feel that way because the Ravens already made a move and 
They not done. Lattimore or J.C. Horn? Next question came from my guy Cody. He said, Ain't great when I have made a comment about trading for Clowney and Johnson a couple days ago, but after watching this Browns game, I want to retract that statement. Well, you can't retract it because now we got Johnson. But anyway, uh, he said, I know our secondary was a little bit banged up, but I feel like we need to make a splash there more than pass rush, even though both wouldn't hurt, LOL. How would you feel about us trading for Lattimore or possibly J.C. Horn? Uh, I feel like we have the safety to solve our problems already in Brandon Stevens. Move him back to safety and let him thrive. Uh, he has issues with turning his head on a deep ball, so solve that, solve that problem by having him already playing deep. Ooh, that's that's something right there. And think, ooh, I didn't think about that. Cause yeah, he used to play safety. Mmm, I like that. But you got Marcus Williams you're paying him a whole lot of money. But I like that a lot, especially because Brandon Williams ain't afraid to be. I mean, Brandon Stevens ain't afraid to be physical either. He ain't afraid of no contact. Oh, I like that. And like you said, the, the the deep ball. That's what he got trouble turning around. So yeah, he would already. Oh, I like this a lot. I, I, I really do. Ravens ain't going to do it, but I, I like this a lot. And then you if you trade it for, like, Lattimore, and that would, that would be my pick out of the two. But, oh, I, I, like, I would love this move, actually. But I don't think the Ravens are hearing it. Next question came from my guy Eli. He said, man, I hope all is well with the family. Just added a new addition on my end of the Ravens family. Oh, congrats, Eli. Everybody give it up for Eli. Shout out to Eli. He said, finally got my son. Oh, okay. Sounds like you've been trying. But do your thing. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you, man. He said, but to the point of this email, why we suck so bad on defense, man? I swear I watched five drop interception, and that drop from Bateman really killed my soul, man. Oh, yeah, that, that hurt bad, especially because of the situation that it was into. Anyway, he said, we never should have lost that game. What can we do to make this defense dominate again? I think we need a new defensive coordinator. Love you, man. Thanks for the content and keeping us, always keeping us updated. No, I appreciate you, Eli, and congrats again. Um... You could get a new defensive coordinator, uh, but I don't think something like that will really happen until next season um, because they're they going to be locked in with Zach Or I, I just I, – I feel like his seat should be hot, but – for whatever for, well not even for whatever reason but since he's family i don't think it is next question came from my guy charles he said hey great hope all is well with you and your family finally figured out how to see you this after being a, a fan of the channel for the last five years i hey, appreciate you thank you he said but the main problem i'm seeing from my point of view being a former player and coach is not so much the outside rush but what nobody is talking about that can fix a lot of the problems is our interior pass rush Ooh, because nominee matabike he's been kind of quiet been really quiet the boy got his bread and like hey early on this season he was doing his thing but as the season went on it's like, hey is where'd he go what happened what's going on anyway he said uh besides Nandi Matabike we have nobody helping him because uh a habit to collapse a pocket consistently Michael Pierce is not what he used to be and takes plays off and Travis Jones is not there yet what we need to do is try to sweeten the pot and offer the Titans a second and a fourth round pick and go get Jeffrey Simmons to help us give Tr Chris Jones a present to help Justin uh, Namdi Matabike on the interior, like a Jones or a Haywood or a, a Lawrence or a Gary. Then that will help the struggling back end. Ooh, there's there's something right there, and that's a really good point because yeah, if you're gonna crash the middle, like that makes life just a disaster for quarterbacks. They get interior, like exterior pressure, outside pass rushes, it's nice to have. It's really, really nice to have. But interior pass rush, if you can get that, oh, my goodness, it, it makes quarterbacks just flip out. So that's a really, really good observation right there. In over your head. Next question came from my guy Anthony. He said, can someone explain to me why this Pop Warner DC went cover zero on the last seven plays of the game? I don't care how bad you are. Every team in the NFL will ultimately see what you're doing and take advantage of it. And that's what the Browns did. Called Max Protection and sent Tillman on a deep route. And bam, touchdown. No DC in their right mind would do that. This shows me and tells me or is in over his head, to be honest. I think if we were to get a college defensive coordinator right now, he would do a better job than Zach Orr. We had the college coordinator two years ago, and that was Mike Donald. And <laughs> hey, you see what happened with that? Anyway, he said, thanks to keep it clean and like bait hands when the game is on the line. I'm out. Oh, you cold for that. Next question came from my guy, David. He said, hey, Engraven, I'm curious your take on our special teams play, specifically Kalia. Well, Kalia, again, I've been saying it throughout this year. He's safe. He's a, he, he's a really safe guy back there. He does not fumble the ball. He don't drop it. And when he gets... He does his kick returns. He'll catch the ball, and he'll start running. And on the first hit, he won't go down, but he'll do this spin where he spins around, and then somebody else will hit him. And then I get scared every time, but he holds on to the ball. Then he goes down on that second hit. But he's, he's safe. Not explosive, but safe. Anyway, uh, he said, I don't like him as our return guy over Wallace. Is it me, or does it seem like he always brings the ball out of the end zone instead of letting it go for a touchback allow, and allows us to get to the, the ball at the 30? Well, we have an issue all over, but our starting field position could be way better if he would stop playing Madden ball and forcing returns. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, hey, when we play Madden, you know, we we bring it out everything. I don't, ain't nobody doing no like taking no knee in the end zone in Madden, but so very good analogy. He said, it seems to me like teams are intentionally kicking it short of the goal line against us because of the facts that Kalia isn't the game record return guy that Duve was. Oh, look at him giving a little slick shout out to Devin Duvenay. You'd have been the first person to do that all season long. Wow, I, I forgot about Devin Duvenay. How was he doing over there with the Jacksonville Jaguars? Shout out to Duvenay, man. I, I, is he? Did he get hurt? I don't even know. But, um, yeah, he's he just safe. He's safe. But now let's see what happens with Deontay Johnson. I know they said he's probably going to be a punt returner, but would they put him on kick return? Nah, they probably won't put him on kick return, too. So it might be the same old stuff. Next question came from my guy, Zager. He said, I've heard Zadarius Smith from Cleveland is possibly free. Uh, what do you think about that move? Well, I mean, if he could sack Lamar Jackson, then he can sack anybody. So I, I wouldn't be mad at it. Um, I don't know, man. I just... I don't know, man. Is I, I I would be cool with it. Um, be more pass rush help, but I, I don't. Maybe it's just me, but I just I don't feel like Zadarius Smith would be like that guy, that game wrecking pass rusher for the Baltimore Ravens. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but that just. I'd be cool with it, but it just wouldn't move me like that. I would, I would obviously hope it works out, though. Other questions also from my guy, Zega. He said, Baltimore doesn't like to pay Ray Lewis. Said it himself when C.J. Mosey was looking for his money. Oh, Baltimore doesn't like to pay. Ray Lewis said it himself when C.J. Mosey was looking for his money. Oh, boy, the, the commas. A comma can change life. It could change everything like that. Ooh. <laughs> but anyway, he said, um, before he got shipped off to the Jets. Another thing is, why would you not pay Patrick Queen if you arguably have the top three linebacker duo? Cause Patrick Queen wanted some more money. They, they, I'm sure they offered Patrick Queen something, but then Patrick Queen was like, "That's it. Oh, nah, I'm straight." Pittsburgh offering more. Okay, see ya. Bye. It's business. Um, he said, and, and then that's why they drafted Trent Simpson because they knew like it could possibly go south with Patrick Queen negotiation wise. And it obviously did because <laughs> he ain't here. Uh, so they was like, "All right, we got Trent Simpson. It's cool." Uh, I understand that Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen not looking good this season, but they have they might have looked better playing alongside each other. They need to stop being so stingy with the money. It's time to win another ring. They must have never heard the saying, "If it ain't broke, don't fix it." Well, while that saying is true, uh, the another saying, "Money don't grow on trees." That's another one. He also said, I just wanted to say I've seen quite a few people bashing Kyle Hamilton for that drop pick. I don't like that he's been our best player on defense, and the one time he messes up and it costs us the game, he gets bashed. They need to stop bashing him. Everyone has a play that they could have done better on, but that doesn't mean uh, to beat them when it's not often. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel you. Uh, I feel you. Uh, Kyle Hamilton, yeah, he had that slip up, that drop pick. But Kyle Hamilton, like, he was the best Probably the best defensive player, the most impactful defensive player all day that game. This next question came from my guy Tyreek. He said, hey, Team Keep It Clean, hope you and your family are doing well. After the loss to the Browns, how would you feel if the Ravens traded for Mike Williams? Well, that's no longer. Uh, and Hassan Reddick. Oh, but that's not happening either because Hassan Reddick, he signed his new deal with. It's just for this year now. But he signed his deal with the Jets, so I don't think he's going anywhere. But Hassan Reddick, he, especially if he was in shape, he could have really done some stuff. Uh, he said, because this team is strong, but we got to be stronger, especially towards the defensive side of the ball. Or maybe we trade for Joey Bosa or Khalil Mack. I ain't been hearing too much about Khalil Mack. Maybe the Ravens got something sneaky going on. I mean, it, it, it is Harbaugh's brother. So he could talk to him and be like, hey, look, brother, hey, help me out, bro. Even We got to play you in a couple weeks on Monday Night Football, but it's only one game. We ain't going to worry about y'all. Y'all ain't going to worry about, about us. Help us out real quick. This question came from my guy, the legit goat. He said, trade ideas. And Graven, after that sorry excuse of a game we had on Sunday, I wanted to get your thoughts on trade ideas because after that game, no fan can deny that something needs to happen. Number one, he said Adam Thielen from the Panthers. But number two, he said Deontay Johnson from the Panthers. Boom. There you go. You got your number two one. Uh, uh, so I will not even mention all these other wide receivers that you mentioned. But he also said Jadavian Clowney, uh, Edge from the Panthers. That would be a nice one. Jonathan Jones, cornerback from the Patriots. Jadavious White from the Rams. Uh, Brendan Eccles from the Jets. I don't know about his game, so I can't say. He said, these are all players the Raven that I can see the Ravens potentially trading for all worth a fourth round pick or lower. Boom. Right again. Because Ravens offered a fifth and got a six back and Deontay Johnson. So you you were on it. Uh, he said, I say we go all in and get Traylon Burks, a big body receiver. Well, that didn't happen. Um, he said, we don't, we don't have uh, Jadavion Clowney to help with the edge rush. Uh, Tredavious White is a good cornerback who plays good in zone coverage. I don't see us getting any players from the Browns like the, the Darius Smith, but we'd love to have him. Sorry for the long list. I just wanted your opinion on this because, in my opinion, we are not going to the Super Bowl AFC Championship game, honestly, if we play like how we played against the Chiefs, Raiders, and Browns. I mean, obviously, because we lost all three of them games. They were close. They were super close, but we lost. 
But what if they do play like they played against all them other games where they won? But nah, I get what you're saying, though. He said we might not even make the playoffs. And if that happens, fight ahead coach and the defensive coordinator this year and start over next year with the staffing and not the roster. Sorry for the long run, but after the King has seven carries, seven yards to carry, and we only gave him the ball 11 times, I'm very frustrated like a Ravens fan, just like almost everybody else. I've been watching you since 2018. The year Lamar got drafted and been a fan since 2011. And we'd like to say I appreciate all your content that you put out, and I'm glad I came across your channel. We love you, Engraven, and I uh, hope you and your family enjoy the rest of your day. Go Ravens flock. <laughs> appreciate you. Next question came from my guy James. He said, Eddie Jackson got to go and Brandon Stevens stay getting cooked. Well, Eddie Jackson, I'm not sure what the Baltimore Ravens are going to do. Um, are they going to bench him and then start Marcus Williams? Or are they going to bench both of them and start new safeties? Uh, I do like the, the somebody's uh, idea from a couple of questions ago where they said to actually put Brandon Stevens as safety. And then just, and I know it was for, to potentially trade for J.C. Horn and Marshawn Lattimore, but to have Brandon Stevens at safety, I said, oh, that could be a really, really good idea. 